To illustrate what the a pillar strike is, we'll look at the crash of the Suba Beast rally team at 100 acre wood in 2017, where the car went wide in a corner and hit a tree at the top of the a pillar, and the roof bar configuration was a 253.13 that doesn't support the corners, and the cage collapsed, getting very close to the face of the driver, who fortunately wasn't injured in the crash. The first observation is that the roll cage lateral was not gusseted to the A pillar, so the A pillar pushed into the roll cage. The second observation is that the 253-15 bar, also known as windscreen pillar reinforcement or A pillar support bar, did collapse with the uh, uh, lateral as there was no bar in the roof to support the uh, top corner of the cage. And finally, it's the uh, temple bar also known as 253-31 that supported the back of the lateral and was the last inflection point of the lateral bar. There is a general agreement that the 253-13 roof bar configuration was the main cause for the collapse of the cage. Now let's fast forward to South Ohio Forest Rally in 2025, where the Zabski brothers also suffered an AP last strike, this time on the co-driver side. First, let's look at the design of the cage. This is a traditional double V configuration with a V in the roof supporting the front corners of the cage. The uh, windshield bar is one piece uh, with a slight bend in it and the uh, roof bar connects to the bend in the windshield bar and is prolongated by a gusset. The uh, windscreen support bar uh, connects to the bottom of that gusset. Also note that the cage has a 253.31 temple bar, and but that uh, bar doesn't go forward of the B-pillar. Finally, like uh, with the other cage, the uh, lateral has not been gusseted to the A-pillar of the car. If you look at the original strike, the tree hit about two-thirds of the A-pillar, and uh, it pushed also towards the inside of the car. Now, if we look at how uh, the bar came inside, um, the arrow points to where the initial impact was and the A-pillar was pushed down and towards the inside of the car. In terms that put constraint towards the uh, top of the bar on the gusset and um, the tube push a tremendous amount of force against the triangle on the gusset and the tube sheared at the gusset. So what you are seeing here is the uh, uh, lateral um, of the A-pillar that sheared and that the continuation of the bar that goes to the main uh, roll bar and here that the windshield support bar that collapsed with uh, the lateral. So the force towards the inside of the car caused the lateral bar to shear at the gusset here but there is still a down force that is also applied to the bar and that will cause uh, the windshield bar to shear at this point. So here you can see the upper point where the windshield bar failed and uh, the point where the lateral failed. You can see on this picture that the bar made contact with the helmet of the co-driver uh, who was injured but made a full recovery. Here once the bar shear had the connection with the gusset, uh, both uh, bars come down and you can see how the uh, A-pillar support bar sheared just above the gusset actually. The cage was made of DOM tubing, inch and three quarter, 95 wall. And it's interesting to note that the welds didn't fail, but the tubes sheared at all the uh, stress points with the gussets. So from here, how do we improve the safety of those cages? I think some of the low hanging fruits are uh, having temple bars that are anchored more forward uh, in the cage to protect more the uh, head of the driver or co-driver. Also, gussetting the cage to the A-pillar uh, would probably uh, help and make the structure stronger. Now, if you look at what is done in the uh, ready to cars, um, the bars are actually all connecting to the same point, the uh, roof bar, windshield bar, and uh, A-pillar support bar are all connected in one point, and they have actually um, taco gussets um, on all those bars. And I think that's a, a, a much stronger design uh, that basically disperses the force in one single node rather than having all the gussets transferring the force and uh, putting too much force in shear on the tubes. 
If you are interested to learn more about safety equipment and how a cage work in case of big impact, there is the crash analysis of a big crash at the Burkhill climb um, that goes through all the aspects of safety, including extraction. You will find that video as the next video to watch at the end of this one. If you want more information about roll cages, you can go on the Frog Racing website in the text section, select roll cages, and you will have all the rules and examples. And there is also another Frog Racing video dedicated to roll cages. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. That will help me produce more content like this.